What if I told you an AI just fooled people into thinking it was more human than an actual person? Well, as of March 31st, it's official. AI has passed the Turing test, the legendary benchmark where humans chat with both a person and a machine and can't tell which as which. In 1950, Alan Turing proposed an imitation game as a method of determining whether machines could be said to be intelligent. And in this game, now widely known as the Turing test, a human interrogator speaks simultaneously to two witnesses, one human and one machine, via text-only interface. Both witnesses attempt to persuade the interrogator that they are the real human. If the interrogator cannot reliably identify the human, the machine is said to have passed an indication of its ability to imitate human-like intelligence. And in this new experiment uh, that came out in March 31st, uh, OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.5 model pretended to be a chill, introverted internet kid, and people picked it as the human 73% of the time, even when the other option was a real person. This is huge. I mean, think about that. The machine outhumans humans. But here's the twist. If AI can now act like a human, what's the next test? But before I get into that, let's look real quick at how current AIs fooled humans. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you read this whole paper. <laughs> uh, in my uh, usual uh, method, I uploaded the paper to chat GPT and I asked it to summarize it to, and kind of dumb it down uh, for a high school student. So um, it explained the Turing test again. The Turing test is a way to see if a computer can act like a human in a conversation. And if a person can't tell whether they are talking to a machine or a human, the machine passes the test, right? This study found that one of today's most advanced AIs, GPT 4.5, which I use quite uh, frequently uh, on this channel, actually fooled people into thinking it was human more often than actual humans in the test. And this is a first in history, right? So let's briefly go into how they tested this thing. All right. So particip participants chatted with both a real person and an AI in two separate conversations. So as outlined um, in the uh, Turing test, so let me show you some screenshots here in this paper. They uh, had some actual chats with the bots. So you can see right here. Okay. Um, after five minutes, they guessed which one was the human. So it was only five minutes. So it wasn't like they were chatting with this ongoing, but five minutes is a major achievement. And the AI models that were tested, which is our, our uh, tried and true GPT 4.5, um, and then also the less advanced uh, GPT 4.0, which I actually use a lot more than, than um, 4.5. Um, then there's also Llama, which is uh, Meta's model, um, which is advanced. And they also used um, a chatbot from the 1960s called Eliza, which I think... Um, Eliza was actually a uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive behavioral therapist bot um, that uh, you can actually find it online and talk to it. Um, it's, it's actually being emulated in, I think, uh, a web browser somewhere. Um, that might be an interesting video. I'll, I'll uh, see if I can find track that down. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize AI has been around since the mid 50s. So if you think uh, 1950 when Alan Turing invented the imitation game or the Turing test, that was only five years, five years before um, the first AI started coming on the scene. Um, not that AI was publicly available like it is today, but you know, the, the contemporary or the, the, the timeline there is pretty close. So anyway, running this experiment with two groups of people, college students and paid online participants, so you get your, uh, your blind um, testing going there. And um, what they found was, this is, this is the trick, this is what they found, that the secret weapon was to create a persona. And you've seen me on this channel. I do this a lot with the chat bots and the debates. I have a feminist persona, a red pill for persona, and I've made other personas. Um, and I, I tell the chat bot to act as this persona, right? So it doesn't sound like it's reading Wikipedia. 
And uh, from there, it uses all the um, text and conversations that those kinds of personas um, on the internet and in writings and videos and whatever the AIs are, AIs are trained on um, can speak like those people, right? But still, no emotions, no feelings. So keep that in the back of your head. That's going to be important in a moment. Um, the AIs were mo more successful when they were told to act like a shy, slang-using, internet-savvy young person. This made them seem more human. And that could also be, too, that um, the people they were talk that was talking with the AI, they were younger, so it was almost like they were talking to a contemporary. So that could have been a factor, too. Um, ChatGPT 4.5 with a persona was picked as the human 73% of the time. Real humans only picked 27% in those matchups. So, so think about that. The AIs came across more human-like, uh, statistically more significantly um, than the AIs did. <laughs> that's, uh, or um, than the humans did. So that, that's, that's insane, that's crazy. So without a persona, the same AI fool people much less often, only 36% of the time. And then of course, Eliza, which was the very primitive um, 1960s chatbot, barely fooled anyone at about 23%. So there you go. So let's see, the paper uh, said, what did people look for? People didn't focus much on deep reasoning or trivia. Instead, they judged based on how natural the typing and replies felt use of slang, typos, and humor. And you know, I always joke about hey, how AI always outputs a lot of tons of emojis uh, when you do output. So like even right here, down here, there's a little emoji. <laughs> You'll see a lot of that um, come up quite a bit. Gut feelings. So um, the AIs just had human vibes, right? So interestingly, trying to break the AI by saying weird things or using hacker style tricks worked best for figuring out who was fake. So if they if they um, felt like they wanted to game the AI, um, then then it seemed like they were quite successful at it. But just somebody blinds talking, they couldn't tell. So let's see, did the AI pass a Turing test? Yes, uh, you know, 76% is, is a majority, or 73% is a majority, so there you go. Um, GPT 4.5 passed the classic Turing test, which means it can successfully pretend to be human in short text better than real per people under certain conditions. So let's uh, see what the paper says, why this matters. This means that AIs can now, one, replace humans in social or customer facing jobs. And we're already seeing that happen. Um, you know, you call on the phone or you do the, the uh, chats for customer support and the AIs are getting better. They, they, they are getting better. But you know, if you get mad, <laughs> there's nothing they really can do about you getting frustrated, but just general like customer support questions. They're, they're generally pretty good. Let's see. It blurs the line between real and fake relationships with friends or even romantic partners. Well, that's an interesting direction. Um, and also a topic in something that I'm going to bring up momentarily, the next test that's gonna have to be passed in order to make these things more human than human. And if you recognize that phrase, you know where I'm going with this. So um, the study ends with a hopeful thought, if machines can now imitate us this well, maybe it's time we level up by becoming more aware, more emotionally intelligent and better at tr being truly human. So, you know, I've talked a lot about having, you know, developing emotional intelligence and critical um, uh, solving skills, critical thinking skills, and being able to solve, um, you know, do conflict resolution. Those are gonna be three very important skills to have now that AI is gonna do a lot of the busy work for us. But, um, you know, something else uh, that, uh, that's really huge here is that, okay, now the AIs can pass for human, but do they really have empathy? Do they have feelings? And that's where um, this theme was explored in a book by Philip K. Dick called Do Androids Dream of Electronics Sheep? And um, if you know, androids are synthetic, sentient, um, uh, synthetic humans like Data in Star Trek, right? Um, but um, not to be confused with the cyborg like Terminator, which is just basically a robot with um, AI, artificial intelligence wrapped in, you know, um, skin and flesh to look 
like a human. Um, androids don't necessarily look human, but they are sentient. They reason like humans. They solve problems like humans. Kind of a very important distinction here. So then the question becomes, well, what about intelligence if, if it was, um, you know, never or, uh, um, you know, empathy? Can these, these AIs eventually develop empathy? Can they feel? Can they care? about um you know humans that they work alongside and so you know i mentioned the book do androids dream of electronic sheep but it's more famously known as the movie blade runner and in the opening scene of blade runner one of these androids or in the movie they're actually more like clones um, that are programmed through genetics there's this thing called the voight kampf test uh, where they use this device that, um, if you remember, uh, um, the eye that looks in the eyes for pu pupil response. And um, the tester was asking one of the replicants, Leon Kowalski, who was suspected of being a replicant, which they're outlawed on Earth in the movie, but they escaped from, from a planet and got back to Earth. And they just wanted to blend in. They just wanted to live a regular life. But the person giving the test realized that Leon was a replicant and he decided he wanted to toy with him a little more after asking him the question, you know, you, you came across this turtle in the desert with its belly up baking in the sun. What do you mean I'm not helping? I mean you're not helping. Why is that Leon? He eventually loses it, loses control and um, ends up um, shooting uh, the agent, right? So um, anyway, this voight kampf test is the science fiction precursor to what this what what would be the next level of the Turing test? So the Turing tests um, is to test you know can can it emulate human? But the voight kampf test is can AI or artificial beings feel? Do they have empathy? Um, can they have emotions? And so passing as human is not enough. So now we're going to need to ask the question. Does AI understand feelings? Can it fake empathy or feel it? And most chilling, will we get to the point where can we still tell the difference? But anyway, I just thought I would bring up that, uh, see what you thought about uh, AI finally passing, um, emulating being a human, but we still have the major barrier of empathy, feeling. Can the robots feel? So if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe and um, consider supporting this channel. Become a member or uh, come to my lives every Saturday, 7 p.m. MST. And uh, I'll demonstrate some more um, AI tricks. And, uh, you know, we're getting to the point now where this isn't science fiction anymore. It's just science. But until the next one, peace.